Tonight, severe storms deliver a devastating end to the year across several parts of the world. The destruction. It washed down the street like it was a river. The disruptions. Not looking good. And the deaths due to flooding. Blasts in Belgorod. Ukraine strikes back, firing at Russia in response to Moscow's massive missile attack. The truth is that Russia is a threat to the whole of Eastern Europe, at least. Plus, from basement vibes to radio highs. It's just another night in Paris. A Montreal music producer hits all the right notes. CTV National News with Heather Butts. Good evening. Many parts of the world are spending the final weekend of 2023 facing the damaging and deadly aftermath of severe weather. Storms and floods have been causing unprecedented hardships. And in some places, communities are ramping up efforts to stay safe into the new year. CTV's Tony Grace on the dangerous conditions. A flooded tunnel on a high-speed rail line in the UK, bringing New Year's weekend travel to a halt. On the line with a travel agent, and she's trying to find a hotel, so not looking good. 41 trains that normally connect London with Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels, and other European cities cancelled today, expected to resume Sunday. It's quite frustrating, but yeah, hopefully we make it to our destination. The amount of water in the tunnel described as unprecedented. Just days after Storm Garrett battered the UK with heavy rain and high winds. In South Africa today, the tragic aftermath of flash flooding becoming more clear. Officials say 21 people were killed in the community of Ladysmith. In northeastern Australia, parts of Queensland still recovering from a deadly storm this week got another month's worth of rain in a few hours. While across the South Pacific in Peru, more heavy rain is expected, where floodwaters this week inundated as many as 14,000 homes. Farther north in California, they were shoring up Pacific Coast neighborhoods hit by a wall of water on Thursday. That it washed down the street like it was a river. An ocean surge that crashed ashore during high tide. This year's El Nino cycle of warm Pacific air is shifting wind and weather patterns. And this year it is abnormally strong and there is over 50% chance that it might be one of the strongest ever recorded. Putting North America on track for more unusual winter weather in the weeks to come. It's going to raise the temperature um, across North America. And what that means is that precipitation that could normally fall as snow um, could very much fall as rain. And it can lead to some of the flooding issues that we've seen. Environment Canada expects this cycle of El Nino to influence our weather patterns through the winter. Some climate officials in the U.S. think its presence could be felt until April or later. Heather. Tony, thank you. Those mild El Nino conditions leading to renewed warnings about the dangers of thin ice after several tragic drownings across Canada. There are concerns the impacts of climate change will permanently transform how we spend our winters and the risks that come with it. CTV's Kamal Karmali reports. A vigil to mourn the tragic loss of two Ottawa teens who drowned in the Rideau River. It comes the same day emergency crews suspended the search for a four-year-old girl who fell into a river north of Quebec City while she was sledding. All in all, at least seven Canadians have died after falling into icy bodies of water in less than a week, including this Edmonton couple and their son. When we have temperatures that are fluctuating, ice is not forming solidly and looks can really be deceiving. Climate scientists say winters are changing rapidly. So I think it's something we need to, to raise public awareness about of the issues and the safety of it because the reality is the climate is warming. Climate change causing milder temperatures, creating more dangerous conditions for winter activities. I'm not surprised about what we see now. I'm surprised that it happened much faster than we originally thought. Now a warning, the future of a Canadian winter may look vastly different and deadly. Warmer temperatures making it more dangerous to be on the ice or even on the slopes with increasing avalanche risks. Well, the climate is changing so fast 
that it's hard for us as human beings to recalibrate our brains. Don't trust your instinct about the weather. Safety experts say it's best to just avoid going out on frozen bodies of water altogether if the temperatures have been fluctuating. And if you do see someone go under, the worst thing you can do is jump in after them. Instead, call 911 or throw them a device they can hang on to. Heather? Some good advice to keep in mind. Kamal, thank you. The wet and warm conditions are causing havoc for many ski hills across the country. On the West Coast, some mountains have been forced to scale back during the holidays, one of the most critical times of the year for resort operations. CTV's Craig Krause has more. Definitely not what you expect on top of a mountain. Little to no snow on top of Vancouver area mountains, leaving these Ontario tourists disappointed. This time last year, it was like, dumping snow so i was coming here like expecting some you know you know some wintry conditions for christmas but you know it's just you know not in the cards i guess we were hoping for some better weather better weather that brings snow rather than unseasonably warm temperatures and rain showers leaving behind slush and mud on the slopes forcing north shore mountains to either shut down or limit the runs. This one's been a real challenge. The winter woes stretch across much of southern BC, making for a slow start to the season. And let's say we're down, doesn't matter, 50%. Um, you know, that's not ground, financial ground that we can make up later in the season. I think it's been a, a challenging year um, across the board and, and really the focus for all of the resorts in the, in the province is to get as much terrain open um, as quickly as we can, but obviously with safety in mind. What's happening this year, unlike in the past? There's a repetitive cycle that occurs in the climate system called El Nino. Michael Pidwerney studies weather at North American ski resorts and says this year's El Nino cycle could be one of the strongest ever recorded, and it may be beyond a natural phenomena. Well, climate change is making these events um, a little bit more intense and a little bit more warmer each time they occur. It, it seems to be getting progressively worse. I don't know that I need it. In the meantime, the Dawsons are left making the best of their trip to BC by going for a hike in the pouring rain. Can't really ski, so we're going to make the next best, uh, next best thing. Craig Crow, CTV News, Vancouver. Overseas, the battle between Russia and Ukraine is escalating after a deadly missile attack inside Russia. It comes after numerous strikes this week that killed dozens in Ukraine. CTV's Jeremy Charon on the shelling that sent people running for cover. A daytime blast in the center of Belgorod caught on camera. Burning cars and plumes of smoke as air raid sirens sounded in this border town. Russian officials say a series of deadly Ukrainian airstrikes today have killed more than a dozen people and injured over 100. This crime will not go unpunished, said this Russian Defense Ministry spokesperson. The attack comes just a day after Russia fired a major barrage across Ukraine. The truth is that Russia is a threat to, to the whole of Eastern Europe, at least, and I think people need to understand that. Uh, I do hope that uh, this, uh, this will not repeat itself, because I understand this is a scary reality. The 18-hour aerial bombardment is the biggest since the war began, killing 39 people and injuring more than 150. The purpose of a massive barrage is to defeat the Ukrainian defenses. By sending so many missiles and drones at the same time, it can overwhelm the defenses. Ukraine's air force is now calling for help strengthening the country's air defense systems. After Poland said a Russian rocket briefly entered its airspace yesterday. This is another signal for our partners to strengthen Ukraine with the necessary number of air defense weapons so that we become a shield between the aggressor and Europe, this spokesperson says. Russia says it won't provide an explanation about the incident until Poland proves it was in fact a Russian missile. Now, while fighting on the front lines has been bogged down by winter weather, the last 48 hours has seen both sides face what they've called the worst attack since the war began two years ago. Heather. Jeremy Sharon in Ottawa. Months into another conflict, Israeli tanks are pressing deeper into central and southern Gaza. Military strikes pounded the enclave where the majority of people are displaced. Israeli troops say they carried out strikes against Iran-backed Hezbollah in Lebanon and also destroyed a hideout used by a top Hamas official in Gaza. 
With more than 100 hostages still in captivity, thousands of protesters rallied in Tel Aviv, demanding Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu step down over his handling of the war against Hamas. Tensions over the conflict have been widespread. Today, some controversy near one of Canada's busiest highways. Pro-Palestinian protesters assembled, as they have for weeks, but police in Toronto closed an overpass from both sides to stop demonstrators from waving flags and dropping banners over safety concerns. That we're confused, legitimately confused, why you're blind, blocking this one for safety reasons. Each one is situation specific. At the end of the day, like, our role here is to facilitate peaceful protests. Protesters say they will continue to gather until there is a ceasefire. Coming up, courage in the shadows of war. He jumped, and during the jump, they shoot him. Stories of survival and the profound ripple effects of the Israel-Hamas war in our look back at the top 10 stories of 2023. For 12 weeks, the world has watched as a brutal battle rages on in the Middle East. The war between Israel and Hamas taking a heavy toll on both sides. This recent conflict has sparked outrage and condemnation around the globe, leading to mass protests and demonstrations. And that's number three in our top 10 stories of the year. Here's CTV's Heather Wright. As the sun rose on October 7th, the worst attack in Israel's history began to unfold. Backed by a barrage of rockets, Hamas militants stormed across the Gaza border. Breaking through Israel's sophisticated fences, they attacked nearby communities. We started to hear automatic weapons from all corners of the kibbutz. Families huddled in safe rooms, frantically texting neighbors and calling loved ones, trying to get any information about the violent carnage happening nearby. Yossi Landau was among the first on scene at Kibbutz Berry. I saw piled up kids and children, hands tied to the back, burned. In the desert that morning, thousands were still partying at the Nova Music Festival. When Hamas gunmen approached from all sides, swarming the site and killing hundreds. Israel says 1,200 people were killed on October 7th, 240 taken hostage. Many more were injured, with Israel now investigating reports of widespread sex crimes, including rape. Among the dead, eight Canadians, including Netta Epstein, who was killed jumping on a grenade that was thrown into the safe room he was hiding in with his fiance Aren Shavit. They uh, throw the third grenade. It, it uh, was rolling through me. And Neta jumped. Uh, they, he jumped. And during the jump, they shoot him. The October 7th attacks caught Israel completely off guard. <laughs> Intelligence failures and over reliance on technology, even complacency, have all been blamed. The IDF says in the first six days of the war, it dropped 6,000 bombs on Gaza, placing the enclave under a total siege cutting off electricity, food and fuel, and sealing the borders. Quickly, the death toll in Gaza began to rise. Injured civilians were rushed to hospitals where supplies and generators began running dangerously low. People are basically suffering. I don't know what else to say. On October 17th, an explosion on the grounds at Al-Ali Hospital killed hundreds. Hamas and Israel blamed each other. And while many countries, including Canada, concluded the explosion was caused by a misfired Islamic Jihad rocket, tension in the region soared. Free, free Palestine! Around the world, the war sparked protests, including in Canada, with pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli demonstrators taking to the streets across the country. Anti-Semitism and Islamophobia also soared. Under relentless bombardment, the conditions in Gaza continued to deteriorate. The first 20 aid trucks were finally allowed to enter the enclave at the Rafah crossing on October 20th. But it would be another week until foreigners, including hundreds of Canadians, were able to leave. I feel that I'm born again, really, because I see the death in front of my eyes every minute. Kill it! 
In Israel, pressure continued to mount on the government to do more to release the hostages being held in Gaza. Children shouldn't be part of this conflict. While calls for a ceasefire grew louder. The United Nations declaring the Gaza Strip the most dangerous place in the world to be a child. We pray for a ceasefire, this man said. We pray for peace. With no fuel to run its generators, hospitals began shutting down. These babies at Al Shifa had to be removed from their incubators, placed eight in a bed to try to keep them alive. Israel accuses Hamas of operating within hospitals and refugee camps, of using civilians as human shields. Behind the scenes, Qatar spent weeks brokering a humanitarian pause, which led to a brief ceasefire in November. Initially four days, the truce was extended twice, and over a week, 105 hostages were released by Hamas, 240 Palestinians released from Israeli jails. Most of Gaza's 2.3 million people are now displaced from their homes, nearly half living in Rafah. 12-year-old Yosra is one of them. She once dreamed of becoming a teacher. Now she dreams of being safe. As the conflict nears its fourth month, questions are being asked about what happens next. Many are calling for a two-state solution, a peace process that can only start once the fighting stops. That is going to take a while because the last thing they want is uh, for uh, certain elements to regroup and have to go back in and face all the pressure from uh, the international community. Israel says it is committed to winning this war, to eliminating Hamas <laughs> and bringing the remaining hostages home. But with more than 20,000 Palestinians dead, according to the Gaza Health Ministry, how long that takes and what comes after, no one yet knows. Heather Wright, CTV News, Toronto. Still ahead, hold on to your financial New Year's resolutions. Why the Bank of Canada says we're in for a bumpy ride in 2024. Efforts to cool inflation have slowed the economy in 2023, but those looking for a quick turnaround next year may be out of luck. Interest rates will likely see some movement, though Canadians seem to know the price pain isn't over yet. CTV's Tim Brook now on consumer concerns. A new year is right around the corner, but the Bank of Canada says we'll be carrying some leftover grief into 2024. We do expect that's going to be a year of transition. The first part's not going to feel good. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Speaking to BNN Bloomberg earlier this month, the message from the central bank's governor is one focused on the long term. Yes, it's working. We got to keep let it working. But here's the current reality. Inflation is still too high and consumer economic confidence is too low. I think I'm a little worried about some of the things going on. Everybody's struggling. There's prices are increasing on everything, but you just you cut back where you have to. I have talked to a lot of my friends about it, and I do believe there will be a recession. That last word is an important one. Our country is facing down a rising unemployment rate, high interest, and five straight months of little to no economic growth. And so the overwhelming majority of Canadians are worried about a recession. That, that's a very serious number. A new survey shows almost three quarters of Canucks are concerned about a possible 2024 recession. When the central bank undertakes these efforts, the fallout is very often historically a recession. But if 2023 has taught us anything, it's that no movement is a guarantee. Sure, the economy is slowing, but consumers and businesses have already weathered some pretty large rate hikes. And so growth is not promised, but there is reason for optimism. Tim Brook, CTV News, Calgary. A Canadian entrepreneur is set to share her cosmetics brand with some of Hollywood's biggest stars at the Golden Globes. It's just like literally giving me goosebumps just thinking about it. After nearly 12 years in business, New Brunswick's Alicia Anderson will be gifting her cosmetics to celebrities ahead of the red carpet event. Goodie bags packed with foundations and brushes are ready to hand out. Just the fact that there's going to be 200 people walking around Beverly Hills with my products next week is insane. 
She is one of six Canadian entrepreneurs heading to the big event. After the break, streaming success. Okay, I think it's time that I make my own song now. It's just another night in Paris. Social media kickstarts a career for a Montreal music producer. Finally for us tonight, a Quebec music maker who has always marched to the beat of his own drum. He used social media to make Hollywood connections, and now he's hitting the top of the charts. SCTV's Lauren Fernandez tells us Mike DeMero will be celebrating those accomplishments into the new year. From zero connections... Well, I was just like googling how to meet popular DJs. To hit it's song Night in, night in Paris. For Mike DeMero, it all started while making music in his parents' basement. They are happy that they believed in me and that they, you know, that they let me build this place in their house. DeMero says he's always marched to the beat of his own drum, leaving school three years ago to focus on music. He began sharing his remixes to popular songs online. It's how I met everyone I know now. And who he knows now includes some key artists, like singer Aloe Black, who's featured on DeMero's first single. He texted me and he said, like, I love your, I love your videos when you do impersonate all the adult DJs, uh, but I would love to hear what you can do, like, as Mike Demiro. I waited two days and after two days, he just sent me the song back and it was recorded and everything and all his voice on all the song and it sounded like perfect and I was like, wow. The song has been at the top of the charts on Quebec radio stations for the past six weeks. It's giving me the motivation to now just focus on my songs and focus on my music. And DeMero is bringing that focus to his first major gig, performing on New Year's Eve at Toboggan Fest, which also happens to be his 24th birthday. When I was young, because my birthday was on 31st December, like my like it was very hard to have some friends at my birthday, you know. My mom, she told me because of that show on 31st first December she was like now you will have like 10,000 people at your birthday and for the upcoming year Mike plans to continue to put out new music with Aloe Black and a fellow Canadian I worked with uh, Kaza who is a Canadian artist also and she had like a lot of success with Hideaway like a few years ago I have a song coming out in January and then my goal is just to release those songs that I wrote in LA hoping to continue making his mark in the music world Lauren Fernandez CTV News that's our show for this Saturday. I'm Heather Butts. For all of us at CTV National News, thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us tomorrow for our final newscast of the year. Good night, and I'll see you again tomorrow. CTV National News, Canada's number one newscast.